behind and beat the Pelicans in overtime. Nuggets lead it by six with 27.8 to go. 46 for Jokic last night. That was on Altitude Sports Network out of Denver. Chris Carlin, Amber Wilson in for Greeny today on ESPN Radio and on ESPN Plus, presented by Progressive Insurance. And Amber, it's not the 46. How about Jokic with 30? 30 of his 46 in the fourth quarter and overtime. It is the first time that any player has scored 30 in fourth quarter and overtime since Kobe Bryant in 2007. 15 years ago, he had 33 against Portland. And it was almost 15 years ago to the day. It was March 16th. But, boy, I mean, what an absolutely amazing night it was for Jokic. A triple-double on 70% shooting as well. I mean, it's off the charts with 12 re rebounds and 11 assists making another Huge case for MVP. Yeah, 46 triple-double in and of itself. And and he also joined Wilt Chamberlain as the only other player in NBA history with a 45-point triple-double on 70% or better shooting. Jokic is unbelievable. He's having an incredible season. I know Embiid right now is leading him in terms of the odds to win the MVP, but Jokic is still there within striking distance. And I think really the difference between those two right now is just Embiid's on the better team with the better record. Uh, but the Nuggets are nothing to sleep on either. And and I think that they could make a little noise here in the West as we head into the playoffs. So Jokic is having an incredible, incredible season. It, it does feel like to me the MVP is kind of becoming a two-horse race between those guys. I'm starting to believe more and more in the Celtics in the East. They got knocked off the nets yesterday 54 from jason tatum and the celtics are really starting to round into looking like a team that could make some real noise in the eastern conference i mean there are if we if we want to look at this and and be honest about it there are four teams in the east right now that i think could go to the nba finals uh, between the sixers the heat the bucks and the celtics i'm not ready to throw the Bulls into that yet, um, despite the, the mid-range messiah that is Tamar DeRozan. But I, I still, I think we've got four teams right there that can legitimately push to get to the NBA Finals. I'm with you. A few weeks ago, I was having a hard time buying into the C's. Uh, Jason Tatum, obviously, I've never had a hard time buying into. Uh, he's an incredible player. But it just feels like, to your point, that they're getting going here right at the right time right where i mean they've been good all season fine they've been in the picture all season but now it feels like things are really heating up for the celtics and so i would put them in that mix as well uh, uh poor bulls but i have a hard time buying in in terms of a real contender for the postseason the Cavs as well as great as they've been all regular season long so it does feel like heat sixers Celtics and Bucks. I think the Bucks being the team in that conversation along with the Heat, frankly, that are that are often overlooked. It's just funny because the Bucks, of course, are the defending champs, but the Sixers steal so many headlines. I just don't know really how good ultimately the Sixers are going to be here in this postseason. I do think the Celtics could have something to say about it. You to know, your point. It, it, what else is amazing too? Think about Tatum for a second and where he was taken. The Sixers traded up to Man, Lakers trying to close this thing out, and now you got back to back turnovers, but a steal by Monk on the inbounds. And LeBron James with the alley oop finish. Malik Monk throws it up for James. James with 54. Right here on ESPN Radio, Saturday night. Time for some straight talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. It's Chris Carlin, Amber Wilson in for Greeny today on ESPN Radio and on ESPN Plus, as well as your smart speaker. Amber, LeBron was vintage the other night. It was beautiful to absolutely watch. And he did everything that he needed to do to go and win that game against the Golden State Warriors. That's all awesome. Can he do that night in and night out to try to let the Lakers get home here and limp into the postseason and maybe make it out of the play-in round? Boy, we are asking a lot of LeBron at age 37. 
Yeah, and the answer to your question is no. He cannot do that night in and night out, nor should he do that to his body night in and night out. I mean, I think as great as LeBron is, and he can still obviously give us 56 when he feels like giving us 56, I think it's when he feels like giving us 56 that's so notable here, and I think he feels like it when he's on national television and it's against the Warriors. And first of all, Chris, somebody had to win this game, right? Because neither of these teams have felt like doing that much lately. So somebody was going to have to win the other night when these teams uh, took on Saturday night when they uh, took each other on. But LeBron was absolutely vintage LeBron. The thing is, LeBron is still that great in snippets. I mean, not that LeBron has fallen off much, but listen, he has fallen off a little. And where you see it at 37 years old is the fact that it's going to come kind of when he feels like going up to that next level. That effort isn't always going to be there. You see it defensively, and I feel like that's in the NBA where you always see players age first is defensive effort because so much of that is just effort. How much effort do you want to put in? How much grind? And as you age and your body's not quite the same, as it used to be it doesn't feel the same as it used to be and because of that you just don't necessarily want to put yourself through it all the time so no LeBron is not going to want to put up 56 every night so that the Lakers can make the postseason it ain't happening when it is happening is on a huge stage against Steph Curry on the Warriors when everyone's watching on national television and everybody's listening here on ESPN radio well if he did he certainly put on a good show and making it look good the other night desperation I mean, uh, got a four-game losing streak. Obviously, our season been up and down, but uh, I would say desperation and inspiring. We play inspired basketball uh, versus a really good team. And we needed this win for sure. Yeah, desperation, inspiration, it's all great. Uh, even if he wanted to do that, and you, you, you never question LeBron's competitiveness, right? Even if he was hoping to get this team home to the postseason, it's asking so, so much. Toughest remaining schedule in the league right now for the Lakers. Their teams that they are facing are 20, uh, are, are, you know, the Lakers are 28 and 35, and they have the toughest remaining schedule. And they cannot get out of their own way. They have no AD. Russell Westbrook, Frank Vogel, is standing up a little bit for, for a bit for Westbrook by not taking him out of the starting lineup when the reports are that the front office absolutely wants him out of the starting lineup, and I get why. I just, if, if I'm LeBron, how much more can I put into this night in and night out when you already see him having to manage how he expends his energy on the nights where he knows he's going to have to put in that much more on the offensive end, he's nowhere near the same player defensively. Well, and that's, and that's the point, right? I mean, the fact that he had to put up 56 for them to get this win is extremely problematic because you don't want you don't want any superstar in that situation. You particularly don't want your 37-year-old superstar in that situation. The problem with the Lakers is that he doesn't have enough around him. Like, there ain't enough. So, yes, could the Lakers make the postseason and could they even make a little noise if he's willing to put up 56 every night? I Sure, but that's obviously not something that's at all realistic it's not something that he's going to want to even have to do and I mean I kind of think that's the point the Warriors have been on a skid here like I joked about it but they've been on it even though they're sitting at second in the west they've been on a skid here they look like they've lost a step and he still had to put up 56 against them to get this done right now they have to win two games to get into the postseason and they are not going to climb back up into the 7-8 matchup He's, they're stuck in the 9-10 because they're sitting four and a half games behind the Clippers, three in the loss column right now. That is not going to be easy to catch them. And Remember when LeBron hated the play-in? Yeah. Well, when he said whoever came up with it should be fired? <laughs> now it's his it, only way into the postseason. And it's magical because he's been stuck having to do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Here we are again, and it's his only way to get home. I, I credit him with trying to make it happen, but boy, he put himself in this situation by assembling this team as he did, no matter how much he wants to try to blame Rob Palenka or anybody else. Russ was your idea, bro. That was it. It was your idea, and it has not worked.
in any way possible. It is Chris Carlin and Amber Wilson in for Greeny today on ESPN Radio and ESPN Plus. Aaron Rodgers closer to staying in Green Bay. A hint this morning from the Packers. Next. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max.